really sold, you know, these types of things into my heart as well was Pastor Bruce. He uh, showed me the value of these types of things and the importance of it. He tells a story about how I went to the Boundary Waters with him and I was totally helpless and I couldn't even uh, draw water out of the lake or something like that, you know, but <laughs> only half of it was true, okay? I wasn't completely helpless. Those of you that heard that story when he took me into the Boundary Waters. We made a little deal was he could use me for any of his training needs, you know, in sermons and so, because I wouldn't get offended at it. So. <laughs> so. So he knew I wouldn't get upset when he used me as an example in a sermon, so anyways. But it, it is very valuable, precious time of fellowship here, and I want to encourage you, even though we're coming to the last night here, we're in fellowship. As a matter of fact, I would like everyone to stand up and go say hi to at least three or four people, someone you haven't even maybe talked to yet or at least had a coherent conversation. So let's just do that. Let's get up and go say hi to three or four people. It's my wife, Amber. She's a stranger. Where are you from originally? He's got a Bible name just like you. His name is Samson. This is Jethro. Yeah, it's a good song. Samson, yeah, Parnell. Good to meet you. Are you uh are you uh enjoying being part of uh yeah oh wow okay nice man Samson man did you you lost it too much too much hi Jasper what's your name Wait, it's like Christian, Christian, Christian. I want to know your name, Christian. Why do you pick the city? Why do you go with Randy today? Christian. Okay, let's go, go. This one. Okay, we have to do it down there. Uh, I, let's play now because we know what to do. We need to have a. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amen. So, what I want to talk about tonight, I think, is something very important because I feel like, you know, a lot of people are believing God for things and they end up disappointed because they see the Word of God. <laughs> They know it's true, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to be working in their life. You know, why are not these promises, where's the disconnect, why is it not happening for me? And I think for some people, um, what happens is they might fall away from the Lord because of that. You know, they might have believed for 10 years and nothing happened. And, the, you know, and it's not that they weren't sincere and really wanting to see God's promises come back. I think that there's just a lot of misunderstanding on how to receive the promises of God. And and so, just because it hasn't come to pass is not a reason to forsake Christ, but what I'm saying is you can get easily get discouraged when you don't see those things happen. And so what I want to talk about tonight, I felt in conversations with Pastor Parnell, was just wanted to just talk about how to activate your faith. How to activate your faith so that you can see 
when you read your Bible, those promises in the spirit realm, you can see those come into the physical realm. Amen? You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And this is just as much for you young kids as it is for the adults here. I want you young kids to know you can see the promises of God right now in your life, as well as us that are older or married or whatever. This is for all of us. We've got to learn how to activate our faith. And so if you got a Bible, which I think a lot of you do, or if you got a well, you can't probably pull it up on your phone because download it. It's not downloaded. I do have an extra Bible here if somebody wants to use it. Well, it depended on your phone. Yeah. I know. Well, I did. I have learned not to be critical of people on their phones during sermons because they very well might be taking notes or actually reading the scriptures. So um, I've learned not to get too uh, too uptight about that. Um, we just confiscate them when they go off, though. <laughs> so. Uh, let's turn to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. The best gospel. The best gospel. That's <laughs> right, Mark. I understand. My son's name, Isaiah. I think um, that's the best book in the Bible. They call it the fifth gospel. Now, what do you say about critical of people's phones go off? It didn't go off. I was just making sure I had it on silent, so I wasn't hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so Mark chapter 11, we're going to read verses 12 through 14 and verses 20 through 24, okay? Mark chapter 11, verses 12, 11, verses 12 through 14 and 20 through 24. Now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. In Jesus, and seen from afar a fig tree having leaves. He went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now in the morning, Verse 20, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. <coughs> so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you have received them and you will have them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your living word, that through the Holy Spirit it's made alive to us, that through the Holy Spirit you disclose and reveal the truth to us, that without you, Holy Spirit, we cannot understand. We ask now for revelation knowledge to flow to all of our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask that you open up these scriptures to Phineas over there and everybody that's paying attention and make it alive to us, Lord that we can really enter in to your promises and really see them fulfilled in our lives. Not down the road, if you want them to happen now. That those things that people are holding in their hearts before you then, and, and have been battling discouragement because they've not seen it come to pass, but they know it's a promise from you, that they would be able to receive it quickly if that's what you want. We just ask now, you speak to all of us right now by the power of your Holy Spirit and make your word alive. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen. Uh, so we see here Jesus cursed the fig tree, and basically within 24 hours it was dead. You know? I mean, it does say that, you know, it was not the season for figs, so it seems like a little rude of Jesus to curse it, you know? But. 
But just so you understand though, fig trees actually produce figs before they produce li leaves, okay? And uh, just so you know. And so um, whether or not it really was the season or not, I don't know, but one thing's for sure, there should be figs on trees, you know, if there are leaves in general, okay? But he cursed it for whatever reason. He's God, he can do it. Maybe it was not doing what it was supposed to be doing, you know, because everything has been commanded to do what it's supposed to do in the universe. Did you know that? And uh, even the trees and the birds and animals, everything should do what it was, was um, purposed to do by God. If it's not, it's out of order. You see, and that's why we get born again. We're out of order, right? And through the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, He's bringing us back into order. He makes us a new creation. He gives us a new heart, a new spirit, so that we can come back into His order. And you have the seed of the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit's in you. You're impregnated with God. And everything within, the Holy, within you now, through the Holy Spirit and His impregnation, will bring you into the fullness of what God has for you. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. That's right. So... There's no reason you can't finish the race, the high call of God on your life. you got everything in you. It's just a matter of how do we release it. That's all. You see, we got to learn how to release it. And you aren't going to do it by watching cartoons on Saturday morning and eating Pop-Tarts, okay? <laughs> Every Saturday morning. Maybe one you can do that out of the month. I don't know. Um, so what we need to understand and we can gather from here is that faith is voice activated. You to think about that. Faith is voice activated. And so remember verse 23? It says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, not think about it, not meditate on it, not that we're against meditation. We want you to meditate on the Word of God like Pete was meditating last night as he just could not sleep. He used his time wisely, didn't he? He just sat before the Lord, and the Lord began to speak things to him. Amen? Amen. And gave us a wonderful encouragement here. But then he goes on, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says, believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So you see three times in that scripture, it's speaking forth. It's speaking. It's activating your faith with your voice. Well, I'm a quiet person. I just, you know. No, you're going to have to get loud. You're going to have to open your mouth. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Wow. Good, good response. Amen. Thank you. Look at that. We had Blake and uh, our Army General over here. No, he's not a general, but they got there. Go to training. Amen. Thanks, guys. It was all my faith. <laughs> so Jesus is teaching his disciples right now. Thank you, Jesus. We just rebuke the spirit of fear now. For our precious little, precious little one here, we thank you, Father, that she's not got a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and sound mind. In Jesus' name, Amen. So Jesus is teaching his disciples right here how to activate their faith. And so, but if you have any doubt about this, what did God say in Genesis one three? God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. How about Genesis 1.11? God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs and yield seed, and the fruit trees, fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Those <coughs> seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. Amen? Yeah. So we're establishing here a foundation that faith is activated through your voice. Obviously, your faith is activated by your actions as well. Faith without works is dead. But I think the primary way it is activated, though, is by your voice. So words are powerful. Can we agree on that? Yep. Yeah. Words are powerful. 
How many of you have had some negative words spoken over you? Come on, I probably ain't anybody can hold it. Even my kids can't hold their hands down on that one. <laughs> Guilty as charged, okay? I'm learning, though, to activate faith over my kids and speak the Word of God over them. I think for the most part I do. There are times I struggle. The question is this. Do you believe what you say? Now, anybody can pair the Scripture, right? You know, you can say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. But do you really believe that? <coughs> I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. But deep down in your heart, I'm a failure. I'm a loser. I'm never going to go anywhere. You see what I'm saying? Do you believe what you're saying right now? When you say, I'll be there at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., do you believe that you're going to be there at 7 p.m.? Come on. We got an African time, Indian time, you Moscow know, time. Tico time, what? Moscow time. Moscow time. You know, we laugh about that, but is that right? No. Our word should be our bond, right? If I say something, I should be ready to do it, right? I should believe that what I'm saying, I'm going to do. I should believe the words I'm speaking that it's real. So when you don't do what you say, you are training your heart, what? Not to believe. So when you don't do what you say you're going to do, you're training your heart not to believe. So when you get in a crisis situation, maybe six months, a year, two years, three years from now, and you start saying, I believe that I'm healed by the stripes and wounds of Christ, but all your, the last two years, everything you said, you didn't do. You think the devil's going to believe what you're saying in that moment? Come on. Now, I'm not saying don't say that. That's not my point. We need to train our hearts to believe that what we're saying is true. And when you do what you say, you're training your heart because you're speaking truth. What does God desire? Truth in our inner hearts. You see, now I don't want anybody to say, do you know anybody here that's true to their word? Or at least consistently true to their word? You probably do. Don't point to anybody. Yeah. You know anybody who's not? Don't point to them, please. No. Okay. Now, I can tell you this much. We're all failing in this at some level, okay? But our goal should be to train our hearts. That when we say something, we're training our hearts. That what we do, what we're training our own hearts to believe, not to disbelieve. Amen? Amen. Now, you all know this scripture, right? All you old timers, been around forever. Uh, that's probably me. <laughs> next to Lynn, I'm the next old timer here, right? Something like that. You may be older. Anyway. Yeah, I, might. You def I definitely look older than you, Lynn. All right. Proverbs 18.21, what does it say? Come on, tell me, guys. The tongue is the power of life and death, and of the fruit of it you shall eat. Pretty close. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So ask yourself the question, what kind of fruit have you been eating lately? <laughs> are your apples been rotten? Your bananas black? You know? Are your, are your, your oranges all soft? See, what kind of fruit have you been eating? Because you're going to eat fruit in your life no matter what. The question is, what kind of fruit are you going to eat? Now, God wants you to eat some pretty good fruit. If you read that Bible, whoo! You know, God's got amazing things He wants to give us. He wants us to prosper financially, He wants us to walk in health, He wants our relationships to flourish. He wants whatever our hand actually touches to be blessed. You read Deuteronomy 28, those first 14 verses. He's going to bless you in the city, bless you in the country. That's where I'm at right now. I've spent my time in the city. Now I'm, in the city. I'm blessed. Blessed. He wants blessings to overtake you. But of course, you're going to have trials and tribulations and persecution in the midst of that. But he's got a lot of good fruit for your church. And I bet we could go around the room here and some people could really share some amazing fruit they've been feasting on. I think Lynn's got some amazing grandkids. She would just be, she feasts on that fruit. 
You see? So death and life are in the power of the tongue. But unfortunately, most people in the world, and unfortunately a lot of people in the church, the words aren't important. The words aren't important. We need to get to where, as the people of God, get to where if we say it, we mean it. If we say it, we do it. Amen? Yeah. I can't tell you how many times working with students over the years, I'll tell them, I'm gonna, I'll help you move on Saturday, I'll bring my trailer, I'll bring my van. They call me three times during the week and say, are you still coming? Are you still coming? Are you still coming? And I'll say, the moment I said I would come is when I would come. I'll be there. You see, you probably need to notice that too in your life as you minister and you get out there and you're faithful to do what you say for people in the world, it blows their mind because they're like, man, you did what you said? They're so used to, it's like they expect people not to do what they say. Let that never be the testimony of our lives. Let, it, let the testimony of our lives be if you say that I am crucified with Christ, you're the first one to pick up the towel to drive dishes. You're the first one to sweep the floor. You're the first one to clean the toilet. It's a good plug for the campus house, right? You're the first one <laughs> to help a, a struggling mom in the store as a believer. Look at these guys, man. They saw that baby heading through the fire. I mean, bam, they almost clashed into each other and crushed her just trying to save her. You see... We should be people of our word. So here's the key, here, here's the kicker, guys. You, not God. I'm talking about God in you, though. You, by your own words, can change the outcome of your circumstances by your words. Come on now. I want you to get a hold of this. This isn't heresy. This is just basic Bible. You can change the outcome of your circumstances by your words. Your words have the power of death or life. Amen? Yeah. So remember Mark 11, 23 through 24, Mark, you remember that? For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, remember, you can change your circumstances by your own words. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says, those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And it's not just saying that. you got to believe that what you're saying is true. That it's something from God. So here, mountains. What we're talking about here is speaking to your problem. When we're talking about casting a mountain into the sea, we're talking about whatever your problem is or whatever your need is. You gotta speak to it. Now, obviously, financially speaking, it's you know, I don't believe you're cursed if you don't financially give. You know why? I believe Malachi when it speaks of how you rob guy, that's old testament. Now, if you guys want to talk about that later, we can. But I will tell you this, you won't experience the financial prosperity that God wants you to have if you don't give. Did you know that? You won't experience it. You will not enjoy. You'll just be stuck in one spot for the rest of your life unless you become a giver. <laughs> it's not just money, it's everything. Your time, your money, your energy, your resources. As a mother or father, I mean, you're giving everything to your kids and it ain't just finances. You're up with puke buckets. You're up with kids puking outside your cabin because they ate too much popcorn, you know, with oil on it. You know, you're, all right, I just took a shower. I'm feeling really good. I lay down, but oh boy, Papa, Daddy, Mama, you know, you're up. You're going to have to learn to be a giver. But here's the deal. You have been given, guys, get this. 
You got to get a hold of this. You have been given the authority by Jesus Christ to speak to your mountains. You have authority. You say to the mountain. It doesn't say, God, would you remove this mountain? It does not say that in the scriptures. It says, you say to the mountain. And this is a big point here, guys, because this is why a lot of Christians are so frustrated. They're, they love Jesus with all their hearts. They really do. They're on fire for Jesus, but they're asking God to move a mountain. He's given them the authority to move. So he's waiting for you to move the mountain, to do what he said. You say to the mountain. You get this, guys? And remember in James chapter 4, 7, just to reaffirm this to you, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It didn't say God's going to resist the devil. It says you got to resist him. And how do you resist him and push him back? By the truth. What did Jesus tell the devil when he came with his temptations in the, you know, in the desert, right? It is written. It is written. It is written. He just spoke the truth. You know, turn these rocks into bread. Ah, I got, I got plenty to eat. You know, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I don't got to put a show on to you, devil. <laughs> I got what I need. You know, you got to speak the truth, and then you got to believe it. You got to push back, church. Yeah. People that come, yeah, you, know, you run into these people. The devil's just beating me up today. I'm just so beat up. He's just, he's been attacking me at every corner. I'm like, well, why aren't you pushing back? You're born again, yeah. You're filled with the Holy Spirit, yeah. You got the Word of God, yeah. Start pushing. Back. You see, we all got to learn to activate our faith, and we all got to learn to fight against the enemy. You know, there's only so much, Pastor Parnell and Pete and Lynn can do for you. You know what I'm saying? There's only so much. They can give you, it's like you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can bring them the best of everything, but you're going to have to take a hold of it, and you're going to have to activate your own faith, and you're going to have to learn to fight. But fighting God's way, you always win. That's the beauty of it. When we get out of bed, we're out of bed in the position of victory, right? We're seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. I don't get up defeated. I get up in the position of victory. I am. My life is hidden in Christ. Did Jesus lose at any corner? No. Thanks be to God who's given me the victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I don't care what mountain you got today. That mountain's got to move. In the name of Jesus. How about Matthew 10.1? It says, Matthew 10, 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them, and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. He's given you this authority. If your life is in Christ, you have the authority to cast out devils, to lay hands. He said, you lay hands on the sick. How about Jesus telling the disciples, you feed the 5,000. He didn't say that and not mean it. He told his disciples, you feed the 5,000. And you know what? They could have. They had the authority. But they just didn't have the understanding. They just did not have the revelation they could do it. You have the authority, church, and it's time that we walk in it. We're living in a time where the, the seas are raging, but it's the time for the church to rise yeah. and walk in its authority. Yeah. I mean, start speaking to that sickness. Cancer, die in the name of Jesus. Debt, you're gone in the name of Jesus. Relationships, you are healed in the name of Jesus. My mom and dad are saved in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have lost. You get your hands off. You get your hands off my finances. Yeah. You get your hands off my blessing today. Yeah. You got to do it, church. Yeah. And I'm telling you, Lynn will tell you this, sometimes you've got to get up and shout at the top of your voice. Yeah. You can't just go, go in the name of Jesus. Cancer die in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no, you die. I mean, you don't have to scream at people or anything, but you know what I'm saying? You got to get a little sand under your skin and you got to rise up. And say it with authority because you have the authority. But here's one thing I want you to get though. This is important. Faith doesn't make God do anything. 
okay? You got to get a hold of this. This is not a blab it and grab it, grab it message, okay? Faith only reaches out and takes what God has already provided. So you got to know what God has provided. You got to know the call of God on your life. You got to know what he's speaking to you. And then you speak it out. You understand what I'm saying? You can't just go, oh, I see that yellow Hummer in the store. I just claim that in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Mark wants that. <laughs> Not really with the guest first. Yeah. No, no, no. Give me a Toyota or a Hyundai. Or a Prius. Prius. There you go, buddy. You know, it says... So you can only reach out and take what God has already promised. But you know, it doesn't, so then what you're doing is really you're talking to your problem about God instead of talking to God about your problem. I think God gets tired of it. We're talking to God all the time about our problem instead of walking in the authority he's given us. Quit going in your prayer closet and crying about not having this or that. He's just saying, come on, walk up and rise up in the authority I've given you. Come on. Oh, these promises are yours. Just speak it out. Say it and believe it. Receive it. Receive my blessings. It's like we all got this $2 trillion account in heaven just sitting there in front of us. And it just goes to waste. It's just sitting there. I, I, I believe that so many promises of God are just going to be left unfulfilled because the church is not learning to walk in the court. But not these churches. We're going to learn it. We've been learning it. Pastor Bruce taught it to us. Lynn taught it to us. We're going to move forward, and we're going to see the gates of hell crash on these campuses in the fall. I mean, we're just, the harvest is plentiful. When God moved me out to the country, I was really concerned. I'm an hour away. Ay, 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 ay. And then I, I was like, but Lord, I'm an, and then same day I was thinking that. He told me, I'm moving you there because I'm going to make your ministry more fruitful. I said, okay, God, I'm done arguing with you. And it's been that. It is more. I can see what's happening. Whatever thing you ask, it says in Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. So true faith is only appropriating what God has already provided in his atonement. That's what I want to get to here. It's only appropriating. You're applying, you're receiving what God has provided in his atonement. That is True faith receives the forgiveness of Jesus. True faith receives the healing of Jesus. True faith receives the financial blessing of Jesus. True faith receives the love, the joy, the peace, the wisdom, and you can go on and on and on. Those things that God has provided for you, church. None of you have to live in depression. Don't ever let doctors or people put you in a box. Bust out of it. I'm not saying not submit and listen to doctors, but listen primarily to Dr. Jesus, okay? In every area of your life, okay? You gotta ultimately, that's the doctor you have to follow, amen? So, whatever thing you ask, Mark 11, 24 again. Therefore I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have now here's where we get in trouble church another area you can't let your five senses what you your sight touch smell taste and hearing you can't let it stop the kingdom of god your five senses if they are more stimulated than your spirit they're going to convince you to give up on the promise of god you pray for healing in your hand or you pray for healing in your knee and a week later you still feel pain. What's more real? The moment you spoke forth the promise of God that I command all pain out of my knee in the name of Jesus. You see, that's the moment it's done. You see, remember, Jesus cursed that the roots of that fig tree, but it took close to 24 hours for the fulfillment of it. So it was already done the moment Jesus spoke. You just didn't see it until 24 hours later. And so when you're speaking the promises of God, when you're saying to your mountain, you might not visibly see anything change in that moment. But you got to believe that what you just said has already been done. It will be cast in the 
Which one is he? Which one? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta believe that it's already done. You might not visibly see anything. But the moment Jesus spoke, that fig tree was dead. You see anybody ever cut a vine or you know a grapevine? The moment you cut it, you know, it still looks wonderful, right? But you come out the next day, then the leaves are starting to wilt, and by maybe the second or third day, they're turning yellow. And by the end of the week, they're just crumbling. You see? You gotta believe the moment you speak what faith God has given you for the promise that He's given you, it's done. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you got 100% forgiveness in the atonement, you got 100% healing in the but we got to start practicing it right now in the little things. I remember on campus, I used to believe God just to find a quarter to put in the meter sometimes because I didn't have a quarter. And I needed to put it in the meter. Otherwise, I got a $10 ticket. There are a lot more now. You pay 50 bucks, I think, now. But, and I'd find a quarter. You know, It starts with the little things. When you minute you feel pain in your pinky, oh, I can live with this. I just, yeah, it's just a little bit of pain. <clears throat> or maybe you start feeling a little arthritis in your hand, you're getting older. Ah, this, I can still live with it. No, speak to it now. Train yourself. Because you see, as you do these little things, it'll prepare you for the bigger th mountains in your life that you're going to encounter. You're going to get big mountains. And you're going to be ready for that big mountain by starting with the little mountains now. Okay? So you don't start walking up on Mount Everest. Maybe you do Pikes Peak. Maybe you just do the fire tower and you start there, you know? <laughs> but you gotta start somewhere. That's why I say to you young kids, start now, speak to your mountains now. You see, because by the time you're 25, you might be moving Mount Everest. I'm serious. I mean, there's guys that are 18 years old pastoring 5,000 people in the world. You see, they just started speaking to their mountains when they were five years old, the day they got born again. You know what I'm saying? So Jesus cursed the, the root of the fig tree. It took close to 24 hours before you could visibly see it was dead. But it was dead as soon as Jesus spoke. Now here's another scripture to, to verify this to you guys. Romans 10, 8 through 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. It's our final scripture. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You confess and you believe in your heart. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see that, church? Confess. Now, why do you think we do testimonies before worship services usually? We were going to give the te we we're going to have um, Isaac give the testimony of how he defeated Elijah today in beanbag toss, but thought that might be a little arrogant so, so I thought I'd just give it since I'm so humble about it and but I I can honestly say I probably would have lost to Isaac because he was playing so well <laughs> I don't think anybody could have defeated him the way he was playing that way but we have those testimonies it says you overcome what by the blood of the lamb by the word of your testimony you're speaking you're confessing what are you confessing? The greatness of God. Look what yeah. God did. Look what God did. Yeah. You see? So your faith is activated by your voice. It's activated by your voice. And so you can just sit and wonder, well, I'd like these promises too. I'd like healing in my body. I'd like provision. I would like friends. I would like my family to be saved. I would like the atmosphere in my workplace to change. I would like, you know, this, that, and this. Or you can start activating your faith by speaking forth the truth. Now remember, faith can only have what God has provided. So you're going to have to know the Lord Jesus Christ, have a real relationship, 
be born again, water baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, have an intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when you get born again. The Holy Spirit and your spirit become one. And now you live in the very Zoe life of God. As Bruce said years ago, God life. And once you get born again, you now have the authority that Jesus has. And did you know that it says in John 17, 23 around there, that God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. And that is not blasphemy. That is the truth. Because you're in Christ. If you're ever struggling with the love of God in your life, just shout out of your mouth, Devil, Jesus loves me. God loves me just as much as he loves Jesus. Get it straight. You're going to the lake of fire. I'm going to the streets of gold. All right? You gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get violent in your faith, church. You gotta get to where you're ready to fight the way God fights, and you fight with your words, in your words, in agreement with the Holy Spirit and the truth. And you'll see amazing things. As I've learned these, I would say that I've really taken a hold of these truths more so in the latter part of my ministry now, and I've been in ministry now almost 33 years. I would say within the last 10 years have I really begin to see these types, this truth happening in my life. You see, just because there were connections I was not making. I mean, I saw fruit, but I'm seeing, I'm getting more into the abundance. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I was going to actually open it up for that. Um, so go ahead, Carlos, share your testimony. And then what I wanted to do was have everybody stand up and actually speak to their mountains right now speak to whatever mountain that is you know and uh, and then also if anybody wanted prayer for anything we would do that as well but go ahead <coughs> thanks Jonathan Jonathan was talking about getting loud Jonathan was talking about getting loud getting loud and uh, I remember when uh, I lost this wedding ring in the Boundary Waters. I won't tell the whole story, but uh, I got it back. But ask him later. It's a good story. And, uh, it's a great story. <laughs> it had been three and a half weeks since I lost it. And it was you know, five hours away in the wilderness. And anyhow, um, we had, God had spoken to Becky and she was complaining that he was gonna bring it back or that he said, you didn't ask me to bring it back. So we got faith when we heard God speak because faith comes from hearing God and so we begin to ask but <coughs> when we begin to ask probably you know if we just believe we had it but there was a fight you know we had to make confession we had to confess to our family we had to you know do do these things and, and I, be, I, I believed I needed to take action so I made phone calls calling places where maybe someone would turn the ring back in someone bring it back from the wilderness a stranger anyhow I at some point we were gonna have a mission trip to Costa Rica and I it was a uh, like 10 days away and I began to confess God I believe that rings I would look at my hand there's no ring on the finger you know I said when my wife and I go to Costa Rica I want people to see I have a wedding ring on my finger <laughs> and and I, at first my heart was like when should I get refitted for a ring and I was like, that's not faith. I'm not believing it's coming back. Amen. So I said, I began to confess. By the time I get on that plane, this ring's going to be on my finger. Hallelujah. And I began to confess that. Well, you're talking about getting loud. And so uh, the week of going to the trip, we we're going to leave to Costa Rica on Friday. It was a Tuesday. And I, 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 I came back from work and I drove into my driveway and I realized I hadn't been standing in that, that type of faith. And so I prayed a prayer in my... You know, in my in my driveway, as I pulled in, I said, oh, "God, I just believe." I said that that ring is coming back. In the name of Jesus, it's coming back. And I felt discouragement, like the devil was right there saying, "You know, it's not coming back." <laughs> and I said, I, I began to get a little louder, a little bit of a whimper, but a little anger. I was like, "No, it's coming back, in Jesus' name." You know, a second confession. He said, "You know, it's not coming back." I said, "No, devil." I said, "It's coming back in Jesus' name." He said, you know it's not wow. coming back. I had to pray four times. Last time I said, it's coming back in Jesus' name. <laughs> that settles it. 
got to come time. Get yourself into that faith, you know. Yeah. Anyway, by Friday it was on my fingers. So <laughs> you gotta you gotta make confession. You gotta get loud sometimes. You gotta stand in faith that what you have it belongs to you. So. That's right. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Free gift. And, you know, think about it. That rock, that ring was sitting on a rock in the boundary water. Behind a bush. Behind a bush. <laughs> And they were out of the boundary waters. They'd been in like what, four hours in, five hours in, yeah. something like that. It's a seven-day trip. And the piece he didn't is the, the lady who found it. They one of the things they prayed was give the person who finds it the urgency to return this thing. And you know what that lady said to the person that she gave it to? She said, she said I just, to me, I, I emailed it. Yeah, she said I, I had an urgency to get this ring back to you. You see, say it. <coughs> and believe it. Say it and believe it, you see. Your heart and your lips have got to connect, church. It's got to be real. That when you say it, you believe it. Now sometimes you might be struggling to believe it, but still say it. You're teaching yourself. You're teaching yourself, amen? Yes. I am. I. One of the things that really helped me a lot early on in my walk with God is, um, some of my earlier mentors turned me on to confession sheets. And they, and confession sheets are just all the word of God, just in a paragraph like on joy or victory or, or prosperity or, you know, or faith, you know. And I just started speaking these. And you know what comes up in my heart all the time now whenever I am facing something different?